Hey guys, what's up? It's Dr. Mike here from season 35 of Survivor Heroes, Healers, and Hustlers. Today I want to talk about azospermia. Azospermia is a condition where you have no sperm in your ejaculate. And it's a very complicated condition that happens to people with, you know, men that are being evaluated for infertility. So the question is, what do we do about it? So azospermia can be divided into two different categories. There is azospermia that it's called obstructive azospermia, where basically the sperm is somehow blocked for some reason, and there is non-obstructive azospermia. When you're obstructed, we have to look through your entire drainage system. So in other words, the sperm is made in the testicle and it drains through the epididymis, then into the vas deferens, through the seminal vesicles, through the prostate, and out the urethra. And there could be a blockage Usually in those cases, we have to do uh, we have to do scopes, so in other words, cystoscopy and transrectal ultrasound looking for blockages. Sometimes these can happen from, I've seen it, surfing accidents, skateboarding accidents, or other kinds of trauma to the scrotum. I've even also heard cases of possibly mesh causing these obstructions after hernia surgeries. We uh, also can have one genetic component called CF, cystic fibrosis mutations, which can cause an obstructive azospermia. So when you have azospermia, you always check for CF mutations. There are two other genetic tests that you check for. One is called a karyotype to make sure that you are XY genes, in other words, instead of being an XXY male, like a Kleinfelter syndrome, or, uh, and also we look for what's called Y chromosome microdeletions. Now, those two things would not be in obstructive azospermia, they would be in non-obstructive azospermia. So let's now talk about the non-obstructive azospermia category. And yes, indeed, the first thing you should do is look at the genetic markers, Another thing that's really important to do when, when somebody is found to be azospermic to begin with is obviously always repeat the semen analysis and, repeat, and check hormone levels to make sure that, you know, to see what the FSH is doing, you know, the follicle stimulating hormone, the brain hormone that tells your testicles to make sperm, uh, and to see what the LH is doing, what the brain hormones that are telling the testicles to make uh, uh, to make testosterone once once we've checked those genetic markers and once we've checked to make sure indeed this person is azospermia has azospermia so is what's called a non-obstructive azospermic then the question becomes what is the next steps so we have to evaluate for other causes of azospermia these could be medication related such as possibly I've seen people on testosterone or propecia or large doses of marijuana. It could be, uh, you know, environmentally associated where people ingested things or were exposed to things at certain points in time that have destroyed their sperm counts, unfortunately. I, it can also be varicocele related. What a varicocele is, which I've talked a lot about before, is that these veins heat up the testicles. You know, basically at puberty, you develop veins around your testicles. They slowly, over time, heat up the testicles. Testicles like it outside the body because they like it a little bit colder than the rest of the body. If they're heated up, the uh, temperature of the uh, testicles heats up even by one degree, causes the testicles not to work as well, can cause pain lower your testosterone and cause fertility issues. When we see somebody with non-obstructive azospermia and varicoceles, the question is, should we fix the varicoceles? And there are different schools of thought on this. Some people would say yes, some people would say no. I, when we fix the varicoceles, there is about a 15% chance, so not great, but not zero, that sperm will return into the ejaculate after we fix the varicoceles. And so it's really important to discuss with the patients exactly what they want 
and what their goals are and make sure that they're knowledgeable about all of the options prior to proceeding or not proceeding with treatments. The uh, next question that you would have is, if you don't have sperm returning to your ejaculate, either whether it's from putting somebody on a medicine called Clomid, which sometimes is necessary, or doing a varicose procedure, how do you get somebody pregnant? And what is the chance that if we went into the testicles, we would be finding sperm? And that also depends on different techniques, such as if you use doing microscopic testicular sperm extraction, if you're looking in the epididymis or the testicle, whether you're doing it, and then once you figure that out, do you do it at the time of IVF, which would be what's called a fresh testicular sperm extraction cycle, or do you do it first to see if there's sperm to freeze, but if there's not sperm, I, is it worth, do you proceed with the IVF? I, and so you have to unfortunately ask a hard question such as, if we are unable to find sperm, do you still want to use donor sperm to get somebody pregnant? This gets even more complicated because if you are willing to use donor sperm and we cannot find sperm, well then you can just use donor sperm doing what's called intrauterine insemination, which is what we call the turkey baster approach and you don't need to do a full IVF cycle possibly. I, as you can see, azoospermia is a very, very complicated issue and you need to make sure you understand it thoroughly in order to understand all of your different treatment options. If you have any questions, feel free to call or reach out to the urology. We are always happy to help.